Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q2 FY22 earnings conference call of Maruti Suzuki India Limited. As a reminder, all participants' lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star and zero on your touchstone phone. Please note this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Pranab Amba Prasad from Maruti Suzuki India Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Vikram. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon once again. May I introduce you to the management team from Maruti Suzuki? Today we have with us our CFO, Mr. Ajay Seth. For marketing and sales, we have member executive board, Mr. Aris Kalsi. Executive director, marketing and sales, Mr. Sushant Shivatsa. From corporate executive director, corporate planning and government affairs, Mr. Rahul Bharti. Senior advisor, corporate planning, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kasahara, and general manager, corporate strategy and investment relations, Mr. Nikhil Vyas. From finance, we have executive director, Mr. Pradeep Burke, and executive vice president, Mr. Sanjay Mathur. The con call will begin with a brief statement on the performance and the outlook of a business by Mr. Seth, after which we'll be happy to receive your questions. May I remind you of the safe harbor? We may be making some forward-looking statements that have to be understood in conjunction with uncertainty and the risk that the company faces. I also like to inform you that the call is being recorded and the transcript will be available at our website. I would now like to invite our CFO, Mr. Seth. Over to you, sir. Thanks, uh, Pranav. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you and your families are healthy and safe. Let us start with some of recent business highlights and milestones. The most notable, notable aspect this year was a record growth in exports. Export sales were the highest ever in the company's history, and the figures of the first half this year exceeds the full year sales of last year. We rolled out Bauti Suzuki Smart Finance across India, an industry-first initiative. It now covers diverse customer profiles. During the quarter, over 1 lakh loans have been disbursed to customers using this platform. This is a testimony of customer acceptance. With focus to improve customer convenience and experience, Maruti Suzuki rolled out Test Assist, an industry-first AI-based 24 by 7 virtual car assistant app. The app is developed by Zane AI, a startup under the company's mail initiative to nurture innovation. We, extend, we extended advanced intelligent telematic technology, Suzuki Connect, for the vehicles in the Arena Channel also. Suzuki Connect offers connected car experience to Maruti Suzuki car owners. The company Come Se Kaam Banega, a campaign to celebrate three decades of leadership in offering countries post fuel efficient cars. Maruti Suzuki over the last, over the years has offered countries most fuel efficient cars across all segments. Working in close partnership with parent company Suzuki Motor Corporation Japan, Maruti Suzuki is committed to promote environmentally friendly products. On employees front, we are happy to share that many employee families have started living at a newly constructed housing project. Over 180 of the 350 flats were offered for possession. 151 flats of these have already been occupied. The company organized multiple vaccine camps for employees and family members. We are confident that by the end of this month, we will be covering 100% of the workforce. Besides, the company is also facilitating the value chain partners and business associates in this regard. The company will continue to observe all COVID-19 SOPs and precautions, be sensitive to the human and social element, build an environment of positivity, and keep working hard as it's bit in these difficult times. Coming to the business performance, Q2 financial year 21-22 was a challenging quarter because of unprecedented global supply crisis of electronic components. As a result, the company witnessed a significant disruption in its production operations and estimated 116,000 vehicles could not be produced owing to electronic component shortage, mostly corresponding to the domestic models. Coming to the demand environment, most of the disruptions caused by second wave of COVID in quarter one, financial year 21-22, the demand started to recover. 
The inquiry bookings and retails in quarter two of this financial year has shown an improvement. However, lack of vehicles because of electronic component shortage has impacted the whole uh, ecosystem and hence the wholesale volumes are down. The company had more than 200,000 pending customer orders at the end of the quarter for which the company is making all efforts to expedite deliveries. In quarter two financial year 21-22, sales in rural markets improved in comparison to the urban markets. As a result, the penetration of overall sales in the rural market increased to over 43% in quarter two of this year. The customer acceptance towards CNG vehicles have increased, and in this quarter, the penetration of sales from CNG vehicles in overall sales stands at 17.8%, up from 11.2% in the same period previous year. The quarter was also marked by an unprecedented increase in the price of commodities like steel, aluminium, and precious metals within a span of one year. The company made maximum efforts to absorb input cost increases, offsetting them through cost reduction and passed on minimum impact to customer by way of car price increase. The company sold a total of 379,541 units during the quarter, constrained by a global shortage of electronic components. Sale in the domestic market stood at 320,133 units. Exports were at 59,408 units, the highest ever in any quarter. During the same period previous year, the company clocked a total sales of 393,130 units, including 370,619 units in the domestic market and 22,511 units in the export market. During the quarter, the company registered net sales of INR 1, Lack 92,978 million compared to net sales of INR 1,76,893 million in quarter two of previous financial year. The net profit came down to INR 4,753 million in this quarter compared to that of INR 13,716 million in the same quarter previous year. Coming to the highlights for the first half, the company sold a total of 733,155 units during this period. Sales in domestic market stood at 628,228 units. Exports in this half year were at 104,927 units. During the same period, previous year, the company clocked a total sales of 469,729 units including 4,37,646 units in the domestic market and 32,083 units in the export market. During the period of first half of this year, the company registered net sales of INR 360,965 million compared to net sales of INR 213,668 million in previous year first half. The sales of financial year 2021 were affected due to COVID-related disruptions. The company made a net profit of INR 9,161 million in this first half of this financial year, compared to that of INR 11,222 million in the first half of 2020-21. Having given you a brief on the financials and the overall company uh, strategy. We are now ready to take any questions, feedback, and any other observation that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached on phone now. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. We have a first question from the line of Pramod Kumar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity, sir. A uh, couple of uh, uh, questions relating, relating to the PNL, basically. Uh, if you can help us understand uh, what has been the hit to the PNL from the Gujarat uh, uh, arrangement, wherein 
uh, uh, we kind of compensate them for the fixed cost as well. And if uh, production volumes have taken a knock and there is a new capacity which has got added there, how much has been the excess burden what Maruti is carrying at this point of time, which uh, is purely because of the Gujarat arrangement? If you can just help us understand, and how do you see that kind of uh, reversing out as the production ramps up? So there are uh, the uh, in fact on account of Gujarat is on two accounts. One is the new, uh, it's basically the new plant which has come up uh, and was capitalized in April. So there's an impact of depreciation that's being charged uh, on that plant, and the second is also the fixed cost that's being incurred on that plant. Obviously, because of chip shortage, the utilization has not been uh, to what we had expected, and therefore the fixed cost that we are carrying on these two accounts, which is depreciation. Uh, where the run rate of the new plant depreciation would be about uh, 500 crores a year. So you can divide it to take a quarterly figure. And the fixed cost, uh, I don't have the fixed cost number right away with me, but uh, there will be a, a, a moderate amount of fixed cost also which is being incurred there. So these two impacts uh, are the ones that will negate once the volumes pick up. And sir, one, just to clarify, this both these expense lines will be sitting for you at the operational level, right? Uh, in terms of the EBITDA or the reposition, uh, uh, ideally should be billed back to you, right? Uh, in terms of, uh, of of cost of the car. So how does how does the depreciation accounting work here? Does it come above EBITDA or below EBITDA? So depreciation is part of our. So depreciation comes under the uh, other expenses that you see. Because okay. the way accounting is done is all other costs, which is material and overheads, they are part of material costs, but depreciation is uh, uh, treated as lease expenses, which is part of other expenses, uh, as you see in the SEBI format. And we, we club it under manufacturing and other expenses in our overall uh, uh, report. And so second question pertains to demand, and uh, in that context, uh, where would you put your dealer inventory? Because I, uh, I'm assuming that dealer inventory should be next to nothing. I just want to confirm that. And the order backlog of 200,000 plus, uh, 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 by when do you see that kind of getting uh, uh, kind of fulfilled? Uh, in a way, I'm also trying to get it as to how do you see the production for the second half of this year in terms of this is what happened or what went wrong in, this, uh, in the September quarter? So we fortunately have our senior executive director, Mr. Shashan Chilvastro, and a question to answer this. Yeah, so uh, the current dealer inventory is uh, roughly around 60,000 cars, including uh, our commercial vehicles. So, um, and of course it's expected uh, with, the, um, with the festive retails uh, going up, it would probably come down a little bit from there. As regards the second half, it's a little uncertain. Uh, from the supply side perspective, and therefore it's uh, we are unable to give you an exact number of what the production or the sale would be in the second half. Yes, you are right. We have uh, more than 250,000 booking spending, but uh, because of uncertainties in terms of supply, it's difficult to uh, predict both the production as well as the exact returns. Thank you. And Shastang San, uh, related to that, will it uh, have further delay in our launch pipeline because we? Kind of thanks to COVID and other other developments we've been running behind uh, 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 on our product launch pipeline. So I'm just trying to understand. Uh, it was already a busy launch pipeline. What you uh, were supposed to initiate. So how how should one look at the launch uh, pipeline from uh, here on? Because beyond a point, so you can't deliver the product. Uh, you know, uh, one of the strong points of Marty Suzuki has been launching new products, uh, which are uh, you know as per the requirement of the consumer. And that is what we intend to do in the future as well. Uh, these uh, launches are actually planned three to four years in advance. So it's unlikely that uh, the needles regarding that will move based on uh, short-term supply uh, situation. Uh, having said that, yes, we have a very strong launch plan in the next few months. Fair enough, sir. Thanks a lot and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, sir. We have next question from the line of Kapil Singh from Normura. Please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I was just trying to understand the in improvement in uh, realization for vehicles that we are seeing. Could you give us an indication whether there were a much higher mix of spare part sales or any raw debt benefit that we may have got this quarter compared to 1Q? Uh, sir, Sorry, I, uh, can you just repeat the question, please? I was a bit distracted, so. 
uh, no worries. Uh, basically, I was looking at the realization per vehicle, which has seen a pretty sharp increase. Uh, so, was just trying to understand whether the spare part mix per uh, as a percentage of revenues has gone up uh, in two Q, which may also be a factor, and whether there was any raw depth benefit that came in for the second quarter. So are you look are you comparing the quarter two of last year with this quarter or are you comparing sequentially? Sequentially from one Q to two Q. Sequentially from one Q to Q two, the increase is not uh, much. It's a small increase, uh, but I think it it gets a bit camouflaged when you look at it uh, along with the spare part sales because last year uh, we had a significant impact on the spare part sales, which was completely down. So if you add that, then the Impact is seen much bigger in terms of realization, but I have these numbers here. So Q1 uh, domestic sales uh, average re realization was four uh, four hundred and twenty-seven thousand, and now in Q2 th uh, uh, this year we have an average realization of four hundred and thirty-one thousand. It's moved up by about four thousand, which is also in line with net of discounts, etc. In line with whatever price increases would have happened. Or any change in the mix that would have happened. Got it. And uh, sir, on the uh, was there any raw debt benefit also for the quarter? Yes, there was. There was. Uh, will it be possible to quantify? It's not a very significant amount. There's a road trap road tap benefit that uh, we have uh, got, and. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, quantum, I think it, uh, it will be not very significant. Oh, okay, sir. Um, also, second question was relating uh, to uh, you know just on the technology front. If uh, if you can uh, throw some light on how do we think of uh, salience of hybrid uh, uh, in India given the current regulatory uh, environment and uh, I mean, will they be a relevant technology over next uh, two, three years, uh, or do, do we need uh, more support from the government side for hybrids to be relevant? Just some thoughts on that would be helpful. So short answer is yes to both. Uh, there is some recognition from the government already. Uh, there is some preferential rate in the GST and some fame benefit to strong hybrids and plug-in hybrids, uh, but we need more. And your other question, will it be a meaningful uh, uh, mainstream kind of option for for the country? Yeah, we believe so. In the next uh, five to ten years, at least, it, it will be a very potent option for reducing CO2. A hybrid does 40% of the job of an electric, and it is scalable as it does not need uh, uh, charging infrastructure. Okay. Uh, so, uh, we because more, of, we need more benefits from the government. Yeah, I, my question was more from a cost perspective whether it it will be viable for the customer to go for hybrids at current uh, incentive level. See, there is a cost to all all options which reduce CO2 drastically. So even EVs have a cost. It's only a question of relative cost. So uh, most manufacturers will adopt uh, paths which suit their context, their business segments, their customer segments. So uh, each manufacturer will have its have his own strategy, and there will be some cost hurdle to for all for any of the options that you consider. Got it. And uh, lastly, sir, do you expect that cost pressures are fully through, or should we expect more cost pressures in the coming quarter? So. There, see, there are two, two parts to it, Kapil. Uh, One is, of course, it depends on how the volumes uh, now pan out because we've been affected on operating leverage because of volumes. So if volumes improve, then definitely we will have the benefit. Uh, we have seen some softening of uh, precious metals uh, in Q2, but since we get it with a lag effect, so we're hopeful that in quarter three we will see some softening at least of the precious metals if they don't again start moving up. So whatever action we can take in terms of hedging, we will be taking. Uh, unfortunately, 
And the monument scene doesn't look good at, at this point in time. We were hoping that that will also soften. But it looks like, given the China issue, it looks like the prices will either be here or we may rise again uh, for steel and aluminium. So we'll have to keep a watch on these these things. We continue to make our own efforts in terms of what we can do with uh, other mitigation plans and cost reduction plans. So that those efforts are on. But uh, uh, two important things for us would be uh, watch the commodity prices moving forward and also watch the uh, 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 volumes. Uh, uh, the other thing that I would like to also mention is that we did a price increase in September. That price increase was done uh, around the first week or around the 10th of September. So that will be fully absorbed in the third quarter because that impact wouldn't have been visible in the second quarter. So that impact would be fully seen in the third quarter as well. So that will also help. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Gunjan Prithyani from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks, team, for taking my questions. Uh, two questions from my side. Firstly, on the follow-up on this uh, margin, uh, can you give us more color on, uh, you know, what is the impact of commodity uh, on a sequential basis? Because Gujarat was part of quarter one uh, cost as well. So incrementally, it's essentially a commodity hit. And also you call out this inc increase in ad and promotional spends in this quarter. What does this pertain to given, you know, we really don't have launches and discounts are very low in the market? No, so effectively, the significant impact has been on commodities. As we mentioned, that our material cost to net sales ratio has moved up by about 6.4%. Now, that is a huge uh, impact uh, in spite of the small price increase that we had taken and also the cost reduction measures that we take in, uh, during the period. So, the impact of, you can, so you can imagine that the impact of commodities is much more than this 6.4% increase that you see because uh, this is after letting off all the other uh, measures that the company has taken. Uh, the quarter two impact is also maximum because the precious metal prices were at its peak in quarter one and the, we always get a lag effect of these uh, commodity costs. Uh, so therefore I mentioned that uh, if, given the current trend of uh, precious metal costs, uh, quarter three or uh, moving forward looks better if there was not to be an increase in this. So, so we will have to keep watching in terms of where the market moves in commodity, but uh, we'll also have to accordingly decide what are the steps the company needs to take if commodities either remain here or go up in terms of corrective measures that are required to be taken. And there are no uh, one-offs of ad and promotional spends that you know, you've uh, mentioned in the presentation. Is, is this a recurring increase in the other expenses? So in other expenses, if you see, there's a bit of a grouping issue. Uh, there, 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 is, uh, there are some expenses that you see going up because uh, correspondingly uh, the recoveries are affected in the operating income. So operating income is up by about 270 crores and the expenses are up by about 230 or 40 crores. So it's a grouping issue. Some expenses have been, which have been recovered have been grouped in uh, operating income and expenses as incurred have been shown in other expenses. Okay, so these are the freight related typically which get captured, okay. Uh, uh, so it would be development expenses, freight related, these kind of things. Okay, the second question I have is uh, on the whole emission or CO2 norms which you briefly touched upon. Now, if you can uh, talk a bit on the CAFE 2 norms and the RDE norms which are, you know, more imminent in the next two years in terms of the, uh, any, any clarity on the cost Im impact or our approach uh, to comply with the same. And more importantly, if I see directionally look at the emission corridor, it is uh, bound to turn more stringent in the next uh, phase as well. Um, you know, uh, whether it's an F27. Um, so, uh, you know, how are we thinking on our product, you know, be it electric, hybrid? I mean, how should we think about the change in powertrain over the next three to five years with these emission norm changes and also given the fuel prices have been rising? So, you know, some thoughts on this will help us, uh, you know, from a, from next three to five year perspective. Okay. On the fuel price increase, how is the market responding? I'll request our uh, 
head of marketing and sales mr shashank to respond on the other two questions i'll uh, i'll take see there are uh, uh, there are two broad regulations which are coming up one is the cafe phase 2 and the second is bs6 phase 2 uh bs6 phase 2 involves a, a clause on real driving emissions because of which we think uh, there will be an impact mostly on diesel uh, powertrain cost to to comply with that so uh, on cafe also different manufacturers will have different strategies of meeting it because there are so many options of reducing your co2 output maruti is uh, uh, the is positioned the best in term because we have the least uh, co2 emission as a portfolio and uh, uh, since it is just around the corner we are expecting it from 1st of april 22 uh, we have to meet the norms and uh, in in terms of the powertrain options that you met and uh, that you talked about so uh, while there are some ev launches but the volumes are quite minuscule and they don't add meaningfully to the uh, to the co2 reduction so we need some technology which addresses the mainstream uh, for example natural gas it does a 25% co2 uh, uh, reduction and is scalable across across india and the government also wants it that is why we are it's a clean there is no particulate matter it's uh, friendly customers the market seems to absorb it well so uh, that is why we are uh, pitching on on natural gas uh, hybrid and ele- uh, hybrid electric vehicles are also very good because they don't need charging infrastructure to scale up they have some cost impact but it is lesser than that of evs and similarly they have about a 40% co2 benefit so the, the, the this churn will happen uh, in most car companies in the next 5 to 10 years and we have to work with options which are best for the customer and which is which gives us good uh, uh, cost efficiency also uh, so on prices uh, may i request shashank sam to kindly uh, what was the question market uh, impact because of increasing fuel prices yeah so uh, directionally of course increased uh, fuel prices increase the cost of running and that's a negative uh, as far as demand is concerned however what we have found is that um, uh, the demand for the cng vehicles has increased dramatically uh, possibly because of two reasons one is uh, this uh, increased gap between the cng fuel price and the gasoline diesel uh, price which means that the cost of running for cng roughly around 1 rupee 60 1 rupee 70 uh, uh, per kilometer against a 5 rupee per kilometer for a diesel or a petrol so that is one reason why it has gone up and the second reason is of course because the cng infrastructure is uh, uh, dramatically uh, is spread uh, thanks to support from the government <coughs> now we are covering almost 250 cities with a uh, 3800 odd stations as against uh, just a 3 4 years back of about 1400 stations covering 150 cities so those uh, directionally i think that will continue and as uh, rahul explained uh, going forward uh, the mix of uh, mix of uh, hybrid and uh, cng uh, is uh, going to help maruti very well as regards that thank, sure, you. thank you this is uh, very helpful um, just if you can share the discount and royalty number and i'll join back to you so royalty for the quarter uh, was at 3.5% and in terms of royalty value it was at 6.72 and discounts in this quarter were uh, at 18567 it was up compared to the first quarter of this year first quarter was at 13911 and in the same period last year our discounts were at 17310 so discounts were slightly up compared to the first quarter compared to last year and about 5000 rupees higher compared to the first quarter that must be due to higher retail i'm guessing versus retail right, right. okay. right. thank you thank you so much
Thank you. We have next question from the line of Pramod Amte from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. A uh, couple of questions. One is uh, you have seen a very strong export traction. Is there uh, any geography mix change compared to traditionally used to export because new products are added up? So uh, we've got some very good response in exports. We've more than doubled our, uh, uh, our volumes. Uh, the biggest gainer was uh, Africa. So one th uh, half of the volume is from Africa and one third of the volume is coming from South Africa alone in Q2. And this is partially because of, uh, uh, because of the Jimny and partially because of increased distribution uh, network there, uh, thanks to uh, our global partner, uh, Toyota's uh, network. And uh, we think, the best part is we think it is sustainable. The other markets have also done well. Uh, there's, a, there's a global recovery also from COVID, so that macro tailwind also helped us. And uh, geographies like uh, Latin America were also good, Chile, Bolivia, Colombia, uh, North uh, uh, countries like Egypt, uh, they, were, they have performed well. Thanks, Rahul. And uh, do you see more products joining in a similar queue uh, with this success which you have seen with Jimny in the next three-year, five-year plan? Let's keep the excitement. Okay. And the second question is with regard to demand. Uh, considering the fact that uh, we have seen uh, uh, unprecedented price hikes uh, for cars, uh, so how are you looking at customer behavior? Do you Are you seeing any uh, bookings being cancelled or customers downgrading the same or what are the solutions you are planning to offer so that he will continue to remain in your basket? So, um, if you look at the uh, increase in uh, prices, you are right, there has been an increase overall uh, in the industry and for Marty Suzuki as well. Um, as you know, we have had three price hikes uh, this year. Uh, the demand seems to uh, be stable. In fact, uh, if you look at the average inquiry or the booking levels have actually gone up. Uh, uh, and I think that's got something to do with uh, the changed consumer preference for personal mobility against uh, shared mobility or uh, public transport. Uh, what are we going to do about it and have we seen any changes segment-wise? We do see uh, segment-wise changes, but it may not entirely be related to cost of acquisition. Uh, the uh, entry hatches uh, have uh, gone down a little bit. They are now about 10% uh, of the market, as against 11% uh, two years back. SUVs have gone up, uh, uh, especially the entry SUV and the mid SUV. So there seems to be a preference not just based on the uh, economics or the cost of acquisition, but also on the design preference. And that's what we see uh, going forward also. We predict a similar sort of movement in the SUV sector. And yes, we are watching that uh, space very carefully. Um, that's one of the spots which uh, we shall look at very carefully going forward. Sure, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Raghunandan from MK Global. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir, for the opportunity uh, to Shashank, sir. Uh, on order booking, can you speak about customer segments where demand is uh, robust and uh, which segments where demand is uh, relatively on the weaker side? Yeah, so I just mentioned uh, if you look at the overall industry level, um, entry SUV, mid SUV, uh, the MPVs, they have gone up. The sedans have come down a little bit. Premium hatches have gone up. Uh, entry hatches have come down just a little bit. So that is overall. If you're talking of Maruti Suzuki, we have uh, seen very strong vehicles, not just in terms of the segment, but also in terms of the fuel type. PNG vehicles have, have uh, and I mentioned it uh, uh, a little while earlier as well, there the uh, demand surge seems to have been huge. And uh, uh, we also continue to have uh, waiting periods actually across the segments. And that's because, uh, as you know, we have had uh, uh, a little bit of erratic production because of the semiconductor issue. 
thank you sushant sir but i was referring to you know like uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know the salary class business community or the first time replacement and you know like uh, uh, recently the it sector has been doing very well so uh, if you can provide any color as to which set of customers are uh, you know like where you are seeing a better mix or uh, demand share in the order bookings Uh, so uh, if you uh, look at if you divide that those segments uh, of course the one uh, the earlier answer pertain to the type of vehicle segment i think now you are also asking about uh, demographic uh, uh, or the type of buying itself so the uh, first time buyer have uh, remained uh, pretty steady uh, for uh, it's uh, roughly around 40 45 46% Uh, uh that has been uh, thing and the the replacement buying which was earlier 26% a couple of years back has come down to about 19.6 but it's slightly up over last year the additional car buying has gone up uh, from about 30% in 2019 20 to about 35.2% uh, uh, in this year so this is by the buyer type if you want of course we have many other types so i'm not sure whether we can go through the entire list but the average age has come down a little bit It used to be about 40 40.3 for maruti suzuki vehicles about 38.5 now uh, average mhsi actually has uh, gone up a little bit um, and if you are talking about those uh, salaried business self employed type of uh, consumers we have seen a drop uh, as far as the salaried you know, consumers are concerned uh, over last year last year it had gone up suddenly from 43% in 1920 to 49% uh, in 2021 has dropped back to that 42 43 level and uh, the business class customers have actually gone down from about 33% in 2019 20 to about 29% now so that is uh, roughly the break up if you want to be uh, in in terms of the occupation uh, i am sure you would like to know about the uh, the uh, the gender percentage also it has remained steady thank you sir sir uh my second question was to mr ajay say uh, uh sir uh, in first half the capex is around 15 billion will the full year capex be lower than the earlier expectation so the capex will be uh, what we had mentioned uh, earlier uh, which is uh, 4500 crores but on top of that we have all also put in an additional amount of about 2200 crores which could be possibly on uh, uh, any any uh, further expansion of land that we are contemplating so there will there could possibly be a total expense of about 6700 crores per year and expense capex is going as per our plan at the moment okay uh, so if i understand correctly for full year fy22 6700 crore of that only 1500 has been spent in the first half That's right. That's right. Got which it, is, sir. Which is what was planned in terms of cash flow, and that's been done in the first half. In the second half, we have a plan of spending the balance. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. This is very helpful. Uh, if you can just share data points on Gujarat production, exports, and fares, that will be helpful. So, exports. Uh, in q1 the uh, the realization was uh, 2900 crores sorry in q2 and in h1 it was about 5188 crores talking about gujarat production and export okay gujarat production It is one lakh twenty thousand for this quarter. And uh, yeah, could you also uh, give the number for Q1? Ninety-six thousand. Ninety-six thousand in quarter one, and hundred and twenty thousand in quarter two. Uh, thank you, sir. And could you have the spare number? As you said, the uh, realization between Q1 and Q2 partly the reason is spare, which has uh, led to the increase. we will give you the figure after some time yeah. uh thank you sir that's all from my side thank you we have next question from the line up amin pirani from jp morgan please go ahead 
Yes. Uh, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, first question is more of a clarification. You mentioned royalty of three and a half percent. Uh, does this include the royalty uh, for the Gujarat production, or is it just what you Maruti Suzuki is producing? So when I when I talk about royalty, it is a combination of both MSI and Gujarat. Okay, okay. Because this number has come down uh, quite drastically uh, from 4Q of last year, even last quarter it was lower. And so, uh, has there been any significant changes in any uh, you know um, uh, of the agreements uh, with Suzuki, or uh, is, is that a mixed issue? Or can you help us understand? We have been telling you for quite some time that as the models move into the rupee formula and then they kick in with the discounts that are applicable on completion of certain volumes, the royalty rates will come down and they have been progressively coming down. Now, all of our models have moved into the rupee formula and uh, also many of them are uh, now under the discount uh, formula because they have done more than the desired numbers uh, for attaining a lower rate. And hence, a combination of the two, the uh, resultant royalty is now lower than 4%. So it, it, it hovers around 35 to 4%, depending on the mix and depending on the model. Okay, okay. And whenever new models come in, then obviously they will still be on rupee formula, but they will not get the discount benefit whenever, as in when you are Yeah, okay. as in when we, uh, when we complete certain volumes, we will start getting discounts. And, so and why we are uh, below 4%. Uh, uh, sorry, Rahul, I, I missed that. Which is why we are saying below four percent broadly, three and a half to four. Understood. Understood. That that's helpful. Uh, second question was, you know, uh, again some uh, you know clarification on the uh, the Toyota collaboration. So uh, the uh, exports, you mentioned that you know there is some benefit from the Toyota dealership network. So uh, is this being sold under? Uh, Toyota branding, uh, uh, you know, in, in South Africa, like you are giving the Balino and the Brezza to Toyota here, is, is it the same thing which is happening or is it under Suzuki brand? So basically, it's the channel there which is a major advantage in geographies like uh, Africa, particularly uh, uh, South Africa. So the major benefit is of uh, is of the distribution network. Plus, there's a global recovery also that has happened in many parts of the world, so that has also helped. Okay, and you know uh, regarding the uh, the India there's bit the of the Germany also that has also yeah of course given of course um, and just on the the uh, just one last thing on the Toyota partnership. So based on uh, what we know, and you know, please correct if I'm wrong, uh, you are currently giving Bellino and Brezza, and you will be giving, uh, you know, Ortega and Fiat uh, models to them uh, in, in the future. And Toyota will be making uh, SUV or MPV in their India plant and giving to you. Is that understanding correct? So what we can confirm to you right now is the current, uh, which you mentioned about Bellino and the Brezza. Okay. And uh, whenever any uh, new project comes about, we will inform mm -hmm. you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thanks a lot. I'll come back in the queue. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Janesh Gandhi from Motila Loswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, my first question pertains to the semiconductor shortage. I mean, uh, today's uh, media article suggests that uh, uh, semiconductor shortage is now getting addressed at Maruti level. So can you confirm that? Or are we still uh, seeing continued challenges like we saw in September and October? Uh, uh, so so uh, as you informed the stock exchange, uh, for September, we said uh, production will be down 60% from plan, and, uh, and also for October, it got better. Uh, yeah, we announced uh, at the beginning uh, that it would be around 40% down. So I think it's getting better. And as we um, uh, as we uh, discussed earlier in the day, uh, yeah, there would be probably November would be better than October. However, however, the uh, dynamics are still unclear because it's a global issue. And there are a lot of uh, uh, there's a whole lot of supply chain involved in this globally, 
So I think good forward projection of when it will become normal uh, is a little difficult uh, to, to, to state at this moment. Right. And uh, regarding the CNG uh, being very strong, uh, with expected increase in CNG prices uh, due to regulatory changes, do you expect uh, uh, softening coming in soft, softening in demand on CNG because of the price increases, or uh, uh, given that gap will still be uh, better, uh, CNG should do better. Yeah, so I think the gap still exists huge. There's a huge gap. We have petrol, diesel, roughly around 105 to 110 range in most of the states. Uh, CNG is still in that uh, broad range of about 48 to 57. So there is still a big uh, gap. The uh, efficiencies for CNG is also much better. So I think the um, uh, cost of uh, running um, uh, around a rupee and 70 uh, uh, per kilometer is substantially lower than the five rupee per kilometer that you get for diesel and petrol. So I think that gap is likely to continue, and that means that there would be a positive trend towards CNG even going forward. Okay, okay. And uh, last question to uh, State, sir. Uh, with respect to uh, the commodity cost inflation, so in this quarter, vis-a-vis -vis first quarter, uh, impact would be very small, right? I mean, about 150 basis points, or uh, it's higher than that? So it will be higher than that because... Uh... There has been an impact compared to the first quarter. Uh, it will not be as steep as it was uh, in the first quarter, but it is. It'll be. Uh, it'll be in the vicinity of about 250 basis points. Got it. Got it. And price increase in uh, September was what about one percent? Price increase that we did on an average was about 1.4 percent. 1.9 percent. Okay, I got it. Uh, great, sir. Thanks and all the best. Thank you. We have next question from the lineup, Aditya Makaria from HDFC Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, this is Aditya from HDFC Security. So I just uh, wanted to know uh, on flex fuel, you know, the government is pushing that very aggressively. So, A, how does that work? Does it need a separate engine uh, or you can just sort of, you know, uh, customize your existing product? And uh, uh, secondly, uh, on the Jimny, there are some reports that it will be launched and and second half. So then that's sort of 12 months away, even from uh, here on. So could you uh, give some qualitative comments on the same? Thanks. Uh, uh, Aditya, I'll try to answer the, the flex fuel question. So the Ministry of Road Transport is quite enthusiastic about flex fuel for three reasons. One, it reduces oil import. Second, it uh, reduces carbon emission. And third, it will help to uh, get farmers better realization for their crops. And uh, since the life cycle of biofuels, the life cycle CO2 is very less. So we are also looking at this option uh, uh, quite seriously. As of now, we do not know the, we do not know the technology. We are studying it, but we are open about it. If uh, how it works is that any fuel you fill into the car, whether it is 100% gasoline or 100% ethanol or anywhere in between, uh, the car runs on the fuel by adjusting itself to the uh, to the characteristics of the fuel. So we are trying to understand. It is a mainstream option in Brazil, and uh, uh, we will. Uh, the only issue is we do not know how much the market will be. Uh, it might be limited in some states or some areas. So we have to study that option along with the carbon footprint of such vehicles, and accordingly we will take a call. On the uh, your other question was about the Jimny. I'll request uh, Mr. Shashank Shivak. Uh, now it's just one, but it is still about one to two years away. Right? It's not, not in the immediate term. No, no, more than that. You cannot see uh, in the auto sector any development, any product development lead time is uh, four years. We know that very well. So uh, we cannot have something uh, so soon. So on the Jimny, uh, Shishank Khan, if you can. Yeah, so Jimny, uh, um, as you know, the SUV segment has been uh, growing uh, dramatically. And one of the segments is the lifestyle uh, type of SUV. 
this is a segment which we have been studying very closely. If you recall in the Auto Expo, uh, we had uh, displayed a Jimny to get consumer feedback. So we are uh, doing that uh, study very closely, looking at the market and um, also taking uh, some feedback from potential consumers. And as and when we finalize that plan, we will uh, definitely let you all know. Thank you. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Ronak Sarda from Systematic Shares. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, the first question uh, to Shashankson on the you know CNG side. Uh, one, if you can help us understand, you know, I mean, I am assuming the waiting period is one of the highest in CNG uh, variants. So, what kind of customer profile are we seeing uh, who are coming to CNG? Uh, and related question is, are we planning to you know uh, increase the capacity uh, both at uh, Maruti end and the vendor end? Uh, yeah, so we have been uh, studying that uh, consumer profile for CNG. It is uh, not uh, really different. Uh, as you know, we have CNG in eight of our uh, models out of the 15 that we have. Uh, so there we haven't seen any mm, big difference in terms of profile uh, across the different uh, criteria, whether sure. buyer type or, uh, uh, you know, the occupation wise or the usage wise. Um, so it does appear that almost all consumers in our country are quite conscious of the running cost, and which is what is the very positive right. thing about CNG usage. Uh, on your um, uh, second question of the volumes, uh, as you know, the volumes for CNG for Marty Suzuki have been increasing dramatically, roughly about 75,000 uh, uh, till 17, 18 every year, uh, 105,000 each, 18, 19, little bit up in 1920. 158,000 in 2021, and this year uh, we are projecting something like a 300,000. So yes, you are right. There uh, would be a pressure on the capacity, but I'm sure our supply chain guys are working on it to increase the capacity in line with the projections going forward. So going forward, the projections are even higher. Right. And a related question here, you know, how does the resale value of the existing pool of CNG vehicles have behaved? Because there were earlier concerns, you know, how the uh, deterioration of a vehicle is much uh, larger in a CNG uh, CNG fuel uh, option. So, okay, uh, if you can just help us understand over the last one year, uh, how has the resale values behaved in this segment? Yes, it's a great question, and because and the reason I say that is because there seems to be two type of CNG vehicles which are coming for retail. One is the factory fitted types, and the other is the retrofitted types. The retrofitted uh, CNGs which are coming in the market have that problem that you are referring to. Because okay. there are concerns about safety of retrofitment. There is concern about uh, the engine, uh, you know, the life and the maintenance cost. And that was actually also one of the fears which consumers had when the retrofitment was being done. But when the factory fitted uh, CNG for factory fitted CNG uh, vehicles, there is no such concern. And the, and the used car prices for CNGs actually a little higher uh, because uh, re remember now the gap between a CNG vehicle and a corresponding petrol vehicle is around 90,000 rupees. Now I'm talking of the new car. So that uh, is reflected also in the used cars. So you, we do find that for factory fitted CNG, the used car uh, prices hold uh, 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 quite strongly. But yes, for retrofitment vehicles, it, it does drop. Sure. And the second question uh, uh, to the team uh, on the production side. Uh, I mean, if I if I study your monthly numbers slightly, I mean more care, more you know, on a granular basis, uh, we have seen you know in, in terms of appropriation of volumes, uh, exports and you know sales to uh, uh, the other OEM have not remained largely you know stable month on month, while the overall domestic volumes have seen a very sharp cut as the uh, as as the you know, semiconductor issues have cropped up. So uh, if you can help us understand how do we, you know, um, uh, see uh, the overall vehicle appropriation and how does that change over the next uh, uh, quarter or so? Different electronics. So, uh, see, uh, fortunately, the semiconductor uh, issue did not affect export sales much and we, we were able to largely meet the market demand. Uh, because those particular uh, semiconductors were not used in those uh, in those models with those specifications, so so that's the reason. 
OEM is a small volume. Uh, I mean, that was in proportion. Uh, but we hope we don't have, uh, I mean, the larger thing is to try to get more semiconductors so that this problem is behind us. Sure. And, and the uh, second part to this was, uh, you know, uh, we have heard the OEM, you know, uh, building its inventory, uh, uh, you know, to ensure uh, whenever the semiconductor supply ramps up, uh, the overall production numbers could be higher. Is that some? Is that a feasible option, uh, or uh, how, how does the assembly line change? Or do you think uh, once the overall uh, issue normalizes, uh, then only the overall production can ramp up? Just a thought on uh, if we are building up, you know, uh, partly built inventories or something like that. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, actually, that's a, it's an it's a option if we know uh, that the supply of uh, future supply of uh, components are assured, which in this case is uh, is not true. So you, uh, a, you can uh, theoretically have a B off vehicles and uh, make them FCOK once you receive the components. And you are right; some of the OEMs might be doing it. But the thing is that um, one, you have to store the vehicles for a uh, for for a long period of time. So unless you know that the components will be available definitely, this uh, may not be exactly a feasible option. But uh, okay. if people want to take OEMs, may want to take a chance and keep them in that stage, and so that when the component comes, they can be FC okay. That's possible. Sure. Sir. Thank you, and all the very best. Thank you. We have next question from the line of Sonal Gupta from LNT Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, good evening, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, could I get the retail volumes for the second quarter? For, uh, for Maruti Suzuki, uh, I mean, remember these are estimates because uh, while the figure for Maruti Suzuki is known, but uh, for the industry, it might be uh, an estimate. Uh, uh, so for Marty Suzuki, Q2 uh, retails were about 385,000. 385,000, okay. And uh, I mean, just from the export point, uh, I mean, like uh, since you're selling a lot through the Toyota network as well, uh, I, I just want to understand like how does the pricing work there in the sense that one, uh, I guess we're selling to them from India, so we don't really have any FX risk. And the second thing is given the huge commodity cost increase, uh, I mean, are we able to pass that on? Or even there, you would be seeing that margin pressure and the prices will revise, be revised with a lag? So in case of exports, we do take into account any uh, commodity price increase that's taking place. And we do make corrections for that uh, periodically to ensure that uh, uh, the margins are protected. And also, uh, the exchange rates will have certain play on the price depending on what rate we had contracted and what rate we actually end up uh, supplying them at. So a uh, combination of the two, but we ensure that uh, we protect the cost increases and the margins in the case of exports. Right. And this is uh, on a I mean, uh, longer term, maybe not, I, I don't think we can uh, sort of tackle this commodity price increase on a one or two quarter basis. But I mean, like, uh, I mean, unless you really expect that commodities will come all the way back down, I mean, we're significantly uh, hit because of these pressures. So, I mean, like, uh, how do you see that? I mean, do you see yourself gradually taking price increases every quarter, one to two percent, and passing all these on to the consumer? Or, I mean, like, what is the way forward here? If, uh, all, if you take the past history, commodity cycles have. Uh, you know, uh, been going up and coming down. So they have collected over uh, over a few years. And this is not the first time that we have seen such a peak. There will be corrections. But we will have to keep watching it closely. And wherever we think we can counter this through our own efforts, we will try to do that. That's our first uh, initiative to work on our own cost reduction programs. But if the uh, if the price continues to rise and if there is a need for correction in price, we'll take appropriate decision at that point in time. We've done that in the past, as you would have seen, given these price increases, we have taken price increases in the last uh, six months, two, three times. But obviously, you can't do a very big increase because uh, it, it really upsets the market in terms of demand. Okay, great, sir. Thank you so much. Thanks. 
Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question. On behalf of Maruti Suzuki India Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining with us, and you may now disconnect your lines.